Hi, welcome to my video. I'm Jennifer Roberts. You're either catching me on my True Divine YouTube channel, which is True Divine 44, or my Facebook page, again, True Divine 44. I have a little person here with me, Theodore. Say hi. Hi. So um, just bear with me. I'm putting out this video. It's not a tarot um, video. It's more the fact that I've had somebody weighing heavy on my heart today. Somebody I know I need to put this video out for. Um, and I hope that they hear my words, if not today, when they need it most. So, I have three children in the 3D. Um, yes, we do have three children. Yes, I do have three children. Actually, we have four children. Yeah, Ethan be one, yes. So, Ethan, as Theodore says, is my fourth child, but he's not here in the 3D with us, as as we see, you know, in the physical. So keep them saying I am four years old. No, fourth child. Ethan's the fourth child. I'm not saying you're four. I know you're five. Okay? You cleared that up. So Ethan um he was fine inside of my womb. He was fine in his little world inside of my womb. Healthy, kicking around, comfortable. And at 24 weeks, they found that he wasn't likely to be made for this world. His nose hadn't formed and there were other physical um, difficulties that that he, he'd encountered. I am really so although he was in his own little universe, in his own little world inside my womb, and he was quite comfortable there um, and healthy there, um, the womb of Gaia, the womb of the 3D, what, what he wasn't made for so i gave birth to him and he didn't stay here very long in the physical so this was 11 years ago ethan is 11 years old now in in our years oh, um I was 11 years old. you will be soon Ooh. Ooh. in six years what? time you'll be 11. let me let me count where there's 11. one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Awesome! High five! It's, it's next Respect. to... Respect. It's next to ten. So, carry on. Um, it, at least he, he's making it light-hearted. So, eleven years Did ago when I counting? gave birth to Ethan, um, the because hospital... Of because of your counting, yes. Um, when I gave birth to Ethan, the hospital became my womb. The hospital became a world that usually, after all the operations I've had, I usually hate hospitals. But, well, and being in them as a patient, um, no. Um, but at that time, because it had become my comfort, because it was the only way I could be close to my son physically, it had become my womb, my new world. So when it came to leave the hospital, um, that was the most frightening thing, the most foreign thing I could be doing. Um, I did not want to walk through those double doors um, without Ethan in my arms. I, that was so foreign to me. Um, I've become a natural Hello. mother. Um, I think most people would say I'm pretty damn good at it. But, you know, I, I, that was, as a mother, that was completely foreign to me. That was something that I found so difficult. Um during that time, um, my mother was in Iran, um, busy flying over to come and be with me. Um, but thankfully, um, the person I was with um, and his family, although that relationship wasn't the best, his family were great until my mother got there. And um, one way or another, I was stopped from going to the Chapel of Rest. Reason being is I had planned out, I'd, I'd planned out exactly what I was going to do to go into the chapel of rest and steal my boy, run away with him. I was going to go to Scotland. I was going to take Abigail, my, my child who had already had, um, and we were going to disappear. I even got to the point of um, planning the fact that, you know, eventually his skin would deteriorate, his muscles would deteriorate, and I was fine with just having his bones. That was That's where my head was at. Um, these arms needed to be filled with just Ethan. It was only Ethan that could fill them. Um, so very, very poorly. Um, great loss felt. Um, years have gone by. With those years, um, things have come from the universe, from the people around me that have brought healing. Um, 
and not just healing but actually bliss and joy regarding Ethan. So every year I do something for his birthday, though I'm always talking to him, though I'm always doing things, you know I make a fuss like I would any of my children here in the 3D um, for his birthday, um, not just for me but for the family um, and for Ethan. Yeah, family. Family is everything. Family is everything, isn't it? Yeah. What is it? Family is? Everything. Everything. So, every year I did something different. And it got to the point where I was going to the Garden of Rest, where where the babies, a lot of the babies um, are from the RVI. And I, I, I was getting upset, not at the loss of Ethan, but more at the fact that there was scrotes stealing the things that I'd bought Ethan. Um, and so it got to the point where I, I decided that that wasn't right. I knew Ethan wasn't there, but it was just my place to go and concentrate, to read him a story, um, just to talk to him, to have that, you know, um, connection, you know, the, the, that physical ceremony, if you like. So, you know, it was my mum who said, the, what's the point in going there, Jenny, if you're going to be upset by people who are so unthinking that they would take from a, 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 a child, from something a parent or, or a loved one is putting down for their loved child. Um, why don't we plant a tree? So I've planted a fruit tree, which has been the most awesome fruit tree ever. And I hang things on there every year that the birds keep stealing, um, especially if they're sparkly things. But that's fine. You know, the birds have no bad intent. And we enjoy the fruit from it. It's a plum tree um, and it, it grows like no other fruit tree I've had before. Um, probably because I spend so much time talking to it and being with it. And, you know, we know that trees communicate. Um, if we listen, they communicate greatly. Um, so <clears throat> one of the years um, last year, I, I wrote Ethan a, a, a letter, and I often write him letters, but this one was to just read to him for his birthday. And it's been heavy on my heart to share this letter today um, because I feel there's somebody out there that needs to hear it. And so uh, I'll read it out to you. So it says, Dear Ethan, my boy, another birthday is passing by and this year is my gift to you. Every time a mother births a child, a child births a new mother. A mother is a different mother to each child she has. It took me a very long time to understand and come to terms with the mother I was to you. And at first, it was torture. My arms felt empty. Nothing could fill the emptiness in the arms. My breasts were full and I couldn't feed you. But time marches by, and within that time, it has become more and more apparent to me the mother that you had birthed me into. You taught me more about the physical and what we cannot see, always, the spiritual, than any other. I learned that the physical does not need to be a barrier to the spiritual that we are always connected, that our DNA is like beautiful ribbons that goes across all realms, all space and all time, just like the umbilical cord that I shared with you. In life you taught me to treasure what is here and now because it is a gift to experience things in the physical, to be able to feel and touch. You gave me the capacity to heal and move past trials and tribulations so much faster than before because I can measure them against the pain I initially felt after not having you here with me. And nothing compares to that. They can become mere experiences for growth. So my boy, I thank you for giving me my warrior mummy badge and my spiritual mummy badge. I love you, my darling. So what I'm saying in that letter is that when I initially came home, there was a period of time where people could describe me as crazy. I was on autopilot, didn't speak much, um, and wanted to go and steal my baby from the Chapel of Rest. Uh, my mum came over from Iran, and she thankfully was the only person I could trust to tell me the truth about how he was being cared for 
whether he was nice and clean, um, whether he was wrapped up nicely. Um, and so she she went to the chapel of rest for me. I'm my mum, she's me. You know, I trust her implicitly. So she actually said also that the urge was there she actually gave deliberately gave her big bag to um to the guy that was there because the the urge was there to bring him home to fill my arms with him but you know she looked and and saw that he was being cared for beautifully the guy that did that job I bless him always because you know he does such a good job of caring for mothers babies that they've lost and fathers babies so in that period of time, it felt numb. I went through all the motions of, you know, um, the loss of someone. But ultimately, I just want to speak to the person I'm meant to speak to, or the people that are meant to hear this, and say that, Yes, this 3D is important, and yes, what we feel in this 3D is important. Of course, it is, like I said, it's a gift. Um, but the things you maybe aren't trained to see or can't see all of the time doesn't mean they're not there. They very much are there. Ethan has made himself apparent to me year after year in many forms. We have our ancestors, we have our children in other realms. They don't just cease to exist. So where we do miss the touch and the feel and the, the, the physical side of things, I just want you to know that in the initial loss, yes, it's torture, but you don't need to stay in that place. You can transmute that um, energy, that pain, that loss into spiritual growth and you can use it as a, um, a lesson and a, a, a growth period to expand your knowledge and expand your experience in connecting yourself to the other realms that you maybe don't see day after day. Your baby exists my baby exists and just like the dna strands that are described in this letter they cross all barriers they cross all realms just like the umbilical cord sort of that that is the physical manifestation isn't it of these dna strands that connect us to these loved ones you know we we, we share that umbilical cord we digest things for our baby and then our baby digests it. It's a cycle and we're all connected in that cycle and nobody but nobody can take that connection away from you. The only thing that can happen is that you get too lost in the loss and you put up a barrier um, that you stop that connection, you stop that feeling of connectiveness because um, you get lost in the loss. So I'm just saying to you, um, if you need help with this, I'm here. And uh, you can come out of this on the other side. And that you can actually have an experience of being a mother um, with a baby, with a child, that isn't here in the physical, but is in the spiritual. And I can say that that can bring much joy and much bliss and much understanding of the other aspects of um, the universe of, of, of where we are so I hope that has given you some peace and some understanding of of what um, what you can manifest out of this loss and I hope it's given you some um, some joy in the fact that they, they're never gone not really gone um, you know, this, this physical is a fleeting moment that we experience and nobody exactly knows when or how they're going to leave this experience. Um, but we do, we all do. It might be at different stages of life from literally newborn to a hundred and something years old. Um, we can't tell. 
but we do know it's fleeting we do know it passes and i just want you to know that it if we we pass on to something else we don't just cease to exist so your baby is there my baby is also there around you always so much much love be balanced and be whole see you soon